What's up, WordPress people? I'm Jason Coleman, and I am here today with Andrew Lima, lead developer at Paid Memberships Pro. Andrew is excited to walk through some Zapier use cases and demonstrations. Andrew has a demo ready for us. So I'll let you go into that, Andrew. Thanks, Jason. So today I'm going to demo the PM Pro native integration for Zapier. If you Google Zapier Paid Memberships Pro, you should find the zapier.com landing page for PM Pro. And that, that kind of just explains how you can integrate Paid Memberships Pro with Zapier and thousands of applications that are supported by Zapier. Today for this demo, I'm going to run through connecting PM Pro membership level changes to HubSpot. I figured that would be a good real world example of creating contacts in your CRM whenever a member signs up on your site. The one thing with Zapier is it's a lot of rinse and repeat. So if you do one zap, you'll I'll be confident enough that you'd be able to do 10 to 15 zaps. It's, it's really much filling out a form and just saying, hey, data from PM Pro should be sent to this field in particular. So if you want to get a quick start on Zapier, just Google the zapier.com paid memberships pro link. And then it's we've got a bunch of templates that are quick to get started. It's already set out for you. You just have to fill out the forms and things like that. And then it explains what actions and triggers we have available within the product. But I'll go over that as I get through the actual demo. So to do the demo, I'm going to show you how to authenticate your WordPress site with PM Pro and Zapier, how to authenticate with HubSpot. I just chose HubSpot because it was a free CRM and I just figured it would be a, a good example, as I mentioned. And then I'm gonna run through the Zap on how to map the data from PM Pro to Zapier and then to create a contact within HubSpot. So the first thing you gotta do is log into your WordPress site and navigate to an authenticating user or like an admin account, someone that has PM Pro capabilities that can manage members or see orders, things like that, either a membership manager or a custom role that you have that you know has capabilities of accessing PM Pro or even just an admin. So I've logged into my test site with my admin account and I just went to edit my profile page. It's all the page that we are familiar with. We spend quite a bit of time in the WordPress backend editing a user or editing your own user. So all you got to do is scroll down till you see application passwords. And this is a password that is used to authenticate on Zapier and other applications. If you are developing with the REST API and things like that, it's just a little bit more secure than using your normal WordPress password as it can only access applications that you cannot log in with, with WordPress with this password. So what I'm going to do is give it a name that I can remember. So I'll just say zap test for the sake of this demo. I'm going to click add new application password. Now what you've got to do is just take note of this password or this, these keys that are generated. Do not close this window because once you close it, you cannot get the value of this key yet. And this is basically the password that we created to authenticate PM Pro and Zapier. So you can keep this window open. Uh, I've already logged into everything just to make this demo go a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to navigate to zapier.com and I'm on the make a zap page. So you can see, you know, you can connect WordPress, WooCommerce, PM Pro, MailChimp. There's thousands of apps that, that Zapier integrate with, but for the sake of this demo, I'm going to be doing PM Pro. So I'm just going to search paid memberships pro because that's I'm connecting from paid memberships pro to another service. If it was the other way around, I would search in the right hand search field for PM Pro, but I'm doing PM Pro to HubSpot as the example. So I'm going to choose paid memberships pro. I'm going to choose my second application that I want to get the data to. So it's going to be HubSpot. I'm going to choose that. Your screen might look a bit different. Uh, Zapier does have different layouts when you create Zaps. Like if you go to create a Zap, if you're on the dashboard, it's, it, the, the interface is a little bit different, but the steps are going to be exactly the same. So now the trigger, what is triggering in Paid Memberships Pro? I'm going to say whenever someone signs up for a membership level, 
let's create a contact in HubSpot and get them into our CRM uh, funnel. So now we're going to say, okay, once membership levels changed, what do we want to do with that data? So we're going to say, I think it was create contacts. Sorry, there's so many things you can do. Um, it's really up to you as a site owner on what you want to do with like this automation. You could, as you mentioned, there was one that was like create or update uh, the contacts. So HubSpot has built the integration with Zapier that will say, hey, let's look for the contact if they exist. If not, let's create them. Um, I'm just going to try to keep things simple because when I was running through this earlier today, I saw HubSpot had like a lot of fields and a lot of actions. As you can see, there's like a list of things. Not every integration is going to have this many actions or triggers. I guess the more popular ones and the apps that do more, does more, will have more of these actions and triggers. Um, I'm just going to click here because I can't find it. Uh, so anyway, we're going to click, let's try it. Again, I've just signed up for a free Zapier account. You can use it for PM Pro. Uh, and yeah, it's a free account. There's some limitations to Zapier. You can just check out their pricing page and what those limitations are. Now we get to filling out the data. As you can see, step one is, hey, let's catch membership level data. And then let's create a contact in HubSpot. I'm just going to go over to HubSpot quickly. As you can see, I've already logged into HubSpot and there's no contacts. Back to Zapier, I'm going to click on the Paid Memberships Pro trigger. I chose Paid Memberships Pro. This just also filled with the previous steps that I've done. I'm going to sign into Paid Memberships Pro now. Or well, my site linking through Paid Memberships Pro. Uh, so I'm going to enter my site URL. One important thing is when you're testing Zapier, this native integration with no plug extra plugin installed for PM Pro, it has to be on a site that servers can communicate to. So if you're running something like local WP or desktop server or something like that, your own MAM server, it, it's going to have to have a like a public URL that's available on the internet. Otherwise, tests aren't going to work. Then you just fill out your username and the application password that I created in the previous, previous step on my site. So I'm going to go back to my site, copy my application password, copy it. I'm going to go back to the connection screen and just paste it in and hit yes and continue. All goes well, this window should close and it should say, hey, this is successful. So just got to wait a little bit. Okay, that's closed. So now we just choose account. And the when you do this, you don't have to authenticate every single zap that you make if you do you create a zap today and next week you come to make another zap for orders syncing orders to zero or wave accounting or whatever accounting software you use you will just choose your paid memberships pro account from the drop down so we're just going to continue we're going to set up the trigger now so each trigger has its own settings and fields specific to that trigger or action and with the membership level change trigger i have to think like between triggers and action i get a bit confused uh it's got a level status so i can say i only want to get active members i only want to get cancelled i want to get admin cancelled i want to get only expired all the different level statuses that are available in pm pro you can pre-filter the data based on these level statuses so I'm just going to choose active because active makes sense. It's if someone signs up for a membership level, we're going to add them as a contact list to this to the CRM. We do not, in my case, for this example, I do not want to add it or add the person to the CRM if they've canceled. Um, with the other actions that HubSpot may have available, you could say if they cancel, you know, set a specific status within the CRM. That's when you would use the paid memberships pro trigger as we're using now, but then instead of creating a contact in HubSpot, you could update the contact in HubSpot or remove them from HubSpot. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the trigger, um, but maybe what I should do is, no, it's fine. I've got data. I know I've got data. So I'm just going to test the trigger to see what data comes in just so we can work with the data. So the last, Checkout on my site was done in uh, August the 23rd for membership level one. I was running a test on my own account. So this is the last level 
that is on the database or on the PM Pro system that we could retrieve. With this trigger, what happens is Zapier will send a webhook request to your site or an IPN request, similar to how the gateways interact with your website. It will hit the endpoint and will check if there's any new data. And then if there is new data, it will process the zap and then run the automation for your site. So I'm just going to hit continue because it's uh, sample data. Then again, I pre-chose HubSpot in the previous initial form of choosing the two integrations that I want to do. I'm just going to hit sign in. Uh, and I believe it should be quick because I'm already logged in. So I've created a test company called Pay Paid Memberships Pro Test. That's my free HubSpot account. You would choose your own business name or whatever company profile you may have on HubSpot or your current CRM. Uh, okay, it went through. So that's the single sign in. So my HubSpot account is authenticated. I can continue. Now we're going to say, hey, from the data from step one, that membership level data, that, that test data that we got, let's map that data to fields that HubSpot provide within this action. You're just going to have to bear with me because when I did this test, I realized HubSpot has a lot of fields and you can do quite a bit with it, but I'm just going to insert an email address and try to find a status. So I'm just going to try skip over the fields that aren't really necessary that I know I'm not pulling in for this demo. So like Facebook ad properties, phone numbers, business units, the role, things like that. Also, while you're doing this, if you're running through Zapier, you'll see next to the, the labels, it'll say if it's required or not. I haven't seen any yet, but if I see one, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. And that just means this field has to have a, a non-zero value. So it's really filling out a form and just making sure you read what field does what and the explanation of the fields and things like that. So you can pull in a lot of information. Contact first name, so you can pull in the first name if you want, the last name, the salutation. Here we go, contact email. So what I do now is I'm going to click on the field and here you can see it's got one creates a contact in HubSpot when the level is changed in PM Pro. Here's all our sample data that was pulled through from the previous step. And this is just to give you a visual representation of what the data would look like from the, the paid memberships pro trigger, the, you know, the data that's coming from your website into Zapier. This does not mean that this email address is going to be this the whole time. It just shows you that this is dynamic data from your first step with a placeholder value. And what that is, is when a new Zap comes in, it's going to replace the user's email from the PM Pro level data with whoever the latest customer is that has signed up on your site. Okay, I think that's good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit continue and hope I'm not missing a field. So I'm just really importing the email address into HubSpot whenever a new membership level record or data set has been uh, found by Zapier. So we're gonna test this action. So it says the contact was sent to HubSpot. So if you go to HubSpot and refresh the page, moments of truth, the contact should be, oh, there we go. It just took a bit of time. So as you can see, my email address is pulled in, my contact, my company details, my status, new, the date that it was created. And if I go back to Zapier, okay, I can publish a Zap. So I can just say um, PM Pro level to HubSpot. CRM create contact. So you just want to name your zap something unique that's easily identifiable from the title because you can have as many zaps as your plan allows. So you could have one for membership levels to HubSpot. You could have one for new orders coming in to accounting. You could have new membership levels to the mailing list. It's really endless in terms of what you can do with these automations. Also, just to mention, this is a very simple automation, if I can call it that, as it's just a two-step automation. I've been building automations where it's, you know, five, six steps of get the data, check the data. If the data exists on like a spreadsheet, then update the data. If it doesn't, then you want to, you know, insert the data. Then after that, you can send an email to the customer. So you can really automate a lot of your redundant processes 
or just tasks that you want to kick things off in an automated fashion that, you know, if you're emailing a customer, whenever they sign up for a membership level, you can either do that with, you know, PHP code, or if you're not too familiar with code, Zapier is another great alternative way to do those no code solutions where you're filling out forms and mapping data A with data B and sending it across the internet, if you will, across all your SaaS accounts and things like that. If you were able to follow this quick demo of creating a HubSpot contact from a PM Pro sign up, it will just be copy paste of basically what I've done, except just the fields will change a bit depending on what application you integrate with. So that's, that's my quick demo on posting PM Pro data to HubSpot via Zapier.